Hi guys, now I'm doing a different video as it's transplant week this week uh, from the 2nd to the 8th of September and um, my third part chapter of the story is coming out at some point towards the end this week but I'm doing uh, a video on a story uh, of uh, friends that we've met um, on the children's ward of uh, whilst I've been through my procedures. Um, this story is about uh, Elena and her mother who will be watching this video. Uh, hi, um, Amna. And yeah, I'm just going to tell her about her story and basically sort of outline why it's, it's so important to be aware of Transplant Week and the need for donors um, despite if the law is going to change to opt out next year um, so yeah um, so Alina was born on the 18th of October 2003 and uh, unlike myself um, for the first six months 11 months all seemed to be well um, very just normal meeting the milestones uh, that a child should do at that age but one evening uh, after about 11, 11 months in one evening she became very pale um, she started having a fever and the hands and feet went cold like there was a lot of, like a loss of blood flow uh, so she was taken to hospital for various tests, uh, especially when she also started vomiting blood and became very floppy and very um, sleepy. And the local hospital didn't know what's wrong. Um, they also had uh, a lumbar puncture um, procedure. Uh, but when they got the results back from the blood tests that they've done, they showed her liver numbers were sky high and ALT, AST, they ran about 20 to 40, 60, the ALT level. Her level was 2000, which was scarily high um, and it wasn't getting any better. So obviously having that sort of level, you'd be transferred straight to either the King's College Hospital in London Birmingham Royal Infirmary or at the Birmingham Hosp General Hospital or Leeds Royal Infirmary. Those are the three liver centres. Elena went to the one I go to, which is the King's College Hospital in London. And yeah, and because the levels were so high, um, they put her in induced coma that night that she was transferred. Um, after more various tests and specialist tests that Kings would do, they found the liver was not working at all. The, the liver wasn't working at all. And she would need obviously a transplant, um, which obviously comes as a major shock when you've had the first 11 months be all well and good and then all of a sudden it just... Um, hits you like a rock um, and yeah so she was uh, put on the list uh, and they she said they said basically she wouldn't make her first birthday if they didn't get a transplant luckily they did and that was um, uh, her first donor um, which was a 12 hour liver transplant and the liver was so big that her abdomen had to be left open after the procedure which meant after a few days she, they'd have to do another procedure to close the abdomen um, so so which then obviously after that um, surgery it caused another infection but luckily with antibiotics it cleared that up 
and she was released on the uh, after two and a half months in hospital um, but then on the 23rd of December uh, Alina went back into intensive care with another infection um, but then luckily came back home I'm sorry I'm trying to have to read off the notes that I've had to sort of brief the story on um, yeah so she went back into tent again for a few uh, I think it was for a few days and then she came back home but then February 2004 the jaundice started coming back um, the liver numbers went up again um, and MRI um, they had to do more scans and an MRI scan is a very sort of gives you a very clear picture of what's going on uh, inside and what they showed was the bile ducts which is part of your liver and it helps clear the bile from your blood system out of the liver uh, out of the system because you don't want it in the system because it causes you to be jaundice going clopathic and cause brain damage if the level gets too high um, unfortunately for Alina um, in February 2004 they found that the bile ducts were dilated which means that they weren't working properly and it was causing liver damage um, as soon as the bile ducts stopped working the bile just starts killing the liver um, though the liver's designed to repair itself it's not designed to repair itself around that it just can't uh, which meant obviously that she would need another transplant uh, but luckily in April they got the call um, after being listed in April they got the call uh, in July 2004 and so which was what a year and eight months from birth and after a 10 hour op for a second transplant she looked well and she recovered very well released after three weeks which was incredible it was just usually in for a month so everything seemed to be all right further down the line now further down the line she had a bowel rejection now this is not um, uncommon I've had numerous amounts of rejection after liver transplants and what they do is just whack you with high dose steroids and immunosuppression drugs and it quells it should quell the, the rejection and stop it and this seemed to work with Alina on this one um, so yeah and after the um, after clearing that she was started school free uh being well for a number of years uh all seemed to be going well um like me it'd be day after take day off today as it comes um but in 2009 alina started becoming very tired having a fever again which then became a chest infection and the reason these were developing so quickly is because the infections would struggle to clear as Elena showed in her results that she could she had very low white blood cells and the white blood cells fight any infections that you have they carry the antibodies inside you to fight the infections um, now usually if you have a pressure drugs it means you have a lower white cell count which means you're lower uh, you're very more risk of infection Alina's was drastically low so any infection around she would catch to the point of she couldn't go to school because of the risk of infection this is why when like people say I haven't vaccinated my child you shouldn't 
you should get it vaccinated. You should get your child vaccinated no matter what, because you're not just affecting your child's health, you're affecting other people's health um, when your child goes to school. So, but Elena, um, of course, couldn't, uh, as I said, couldn't fight these infections. Uh, so every time there was one, she had to be immediately admitted or sent straight to a GP as urgently as possible uh, to receive treatment. Um, obviously, she had to come out of school and be home tutored uh, due to the risk, um, which carried on for a while, but eventually the liver numbers went up again. Uh, the liver start, uh, the spleen um, became enlarged and the spleen, what the spleen does is help with your fighting of infections. I now have to be on permanent, permanent IV antibiotics because I have no spleen and that's what the spleen is. So there's a lot of, um, a lot, so you rely a lot on your spleen to say travel the world to go to rainforest countries or anything like that because you can have the live vaccines and stuff if you don't have that if you don't have the spleen you can't do any of that so but her spleen was becoming enlarged because obviously it wasn't working as it should do um, and the stools became loose which is another sign of liver problems um, it's one of the most common signs of liver problems um, not just loose stools but cream coloured stools um, if you go to King's they talk about stools all the time uh, it's a lovely conversation <laughs> and, uh, and weight being lost because of all this and because obviously an enlarged spleen and a liver not Live, uh, not working, so that became enlarged. The abdomen obviously then became enlarged. Um, this all led down the road to another uh, liver assessment for another transplant. And this was around 2011. And this is where I first met Alina because I was in hospital at the same time. And She, um, the one time I remember most is I was in, in Ray's the same time as her and she came into the room and would light the room up. She'd just light it up. It's so positive. You wouldn't know, unless she was having treatment, you wouldn't know she was having all these problems in her life because you just took it all in her stride. Which will remind me a lot at that age, of myself at that age. Like it didn't affect this. Have a laugh, have a joke, take the mick out in the nurses, do what you usually do when you're trying to fight an illness. Pull your lines out. I, I was doing all that at that age, just same as Alina was. Um, just looking at them thinking, don't need this one. Don't need this one. They're all important, but I'm just like, don't need this one, don't need this one. Right? And Alina was the same. Um, she had her transplant on the 31st of May 2011, uh, which took 15, 13 hours this time. Um, but after transplant, her blood clip kept clotting, so she had complications after that. They cleared that up, um, but unfortunately, her tummy kept hurting and was enlarging uh, as well as having continued jaundice after the procedure. Scans meant um, she'd have to have more surgery after transplant because sometimes when you have a transplant you can get sort of a bile leak or bile blockage because you're connecting the liver to the bile ducts so it's very easy to make a mistake and have a leak. Um, I luckily avoided all that, uh, but in Elena's case, she didn't, and she needed more surgery because of it. 
um, before it started causing damage to the liver. Um, but after that, she managed to gain weight through CPN, NG feed, uh, went back to school for a few hours per day. Uh, couldn't do a full day because it was tiring. Um, but by 2014, uh, the antibody antibodies that were in the white blood cells were still not right. Um, the same with her, uh, the numbers of the liver. Um, she had to have a pause cath put in, which is like a port where you can get easy access into her main vein to have treatments. And she needed this for uh, a plasma thesis treatment, which is basically taking the plasma, which carries your antibodies and white cells out and putting new plasma in, which is probably, I've never had it, but um, luckily, uh, so I couldn't tell you what that's like. Um, but yeah, so she had this plasma thesis, which meant she was in intensive care for five days. Um, and because of all this treatment going on, her schooling, her education was being affected. She had to go to special school when she started second, when she needed to start secondary school because it's not because she had special learning difficulties, she was just behind everyone else, um, behind her peers. Um, but um, one thing she did love was art. Me, I was an arty person, I never was, but she loved doing arts and crafts. She made loads of beautiful things um, whilst in hospital to get past the time because eh, hospitals, you're always waiting, always waiting on something. So to pass the time, she would draw beautiful pictures, loads of making, uh, slime making, all that arts and crafts stuff um, to get past and distract herself because um, every patient is a distraction from your otherwise you go mad um, but after the spleen was becoming more enlarged and weight loss uh, in 29 at the beginning of 2019 um, Alina started having more and more and more tummy pain uh, started having more bleeds on her liver, which ne which became such to a point with such pain that she had to have an ambulance called to her to be taken into King straight away. Um, where and when she was called in and the tests were done, it found not just her liver numbers were all over the place and all were sky high again. Her kidney function was gone through the roof. Um, so it meant the bleeds were getting much worse because not just the liver having problems, the kidneys having problems, the spleen's having problems. So it became to a point all that abdomen area was having bleeds constantly. Um, so it also meant that though despite having another plasma thesis treatment she needed another transplant this was going to be a fourth and this was done on the 9th of april 2019 and this was literally you could probably say it was the last shot last sort of roll the dice because of the antibodies that problem that she had and um, she spent 17 hours in surgery tragically uh, she passed away 2 a.m. I don't know if it, exactly if it was on the surgical table, 
but 10th of April, that early morning 10th of April at 2 a.m. she passed away because the ant she couldn't fight the antibodies no more. Uh, the body couldn't fight it. Uh, the antibodies were just if the transplant was successful, her antibodies or white blood cells would have just killed it, and it would just be the same situation again. Um, that's now in hindsight. Um, but obviously at the time you do everything you can to try and give her a chance of life. And it makes me wonder at time, it makes, if my feelings are why, what, what they've done wrong, I don't get. And why am I here and then they're not. And you question that every day. And it reminds you of how, reminds me especially how grateful I am uh, of the chance I have. And I feel this is why this, doing this, all this on this channel, on the media, on anything, it's so important to me to raise awareness, to show the other side of liver disease, um, because they haven't got the chance to um, have the life they wanted. Um, but um, her mother messaged me with this is that she was grateful for the NHS, the organ donors and for all uh, of the livers that were donated to Alina. Um, she was so grateful but also sad that someone has to pass away to receive, to enable to have a chance of life. Uh, And that was to save her life three times. It would have been a fourth if it weren't for the antibodies, but... Um, and through the pain of losing her, I um, Though the pain, I, I say through the pain of losing a door is overwhelming, and it's probably the worst thing you'll ever feel. Um, she's grateful that, in a way, she, that Alina is in peace. Um, she's not in pain anymore. Um, and no longer suffering. Though it's not fair that she's not here. Uh, and here to tell the tale. Um, like I said, she reminded me so much of myself at that age. The way she kept coped with it all. The way she kept fighting, to be honest, never giving in without a fight, even at the end. Um, and I feel her story just reminds us all of how grateful of the health we have, but how important donation is in uh, around the world, and why we should be aware about transplant, we, we should be aware about liver disease, why we should also be aware about non-alcoholic liver diseases and that it affects children, just not alcoholics. Um, especially when you have people, six, around 6,000 people having a transplant every year um, and 6,000 people die in circumstances when they need a transplant. So, yeah, um, so this is my tribute to Alina. Um, uh, your family, friends, um, though I didn't know her for um, a lot of her life, um, it still feels like a little bit of a loss. Um, when you hear stories like this, um, 
you feel it personally because of what you've been through. You've been through the same thing, uh, and she'll and she'll never be forgotten. Not in my mind, anyway. Um, and that's the most important thing. She'll always be around us, no matter what. Uh, so yeah, leave a like, comment. Um, if you want to hear more stories about, uh, I will be releasing more stories on other uh, friends that I know who have agreed to this and um, to raise awareness about Transplant Week this week. Uh, yeah, leave a comment, uh, leave a like on the video, um, subscribe if you want to, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is, is that through stories like Alina's, through Autumn's story that I lost um, on a previous video, we raise awareness about children's liver disease uh, and also the charity Children's Liver Disease Foundation. Uh, you can go to all the links will be down below. You can go to their website, find out more information, uh, donate to this um, to the charity. Uh, or get in contact to raise uh, to raise money. So, yeah, because it all goes down to the research and hopefully finding cures um, or better treatments. So, yeah, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will speak to you guys. Take care.